So we appreciate you joining us today on Upfront. And I wanted to ask you a little bit about impeachment. That's where we'll start. So House Minority Leader and your fellow Republican, Kevin McCarthy, voted against impeachment. But he did say the president bears responsibility for the attack on Congress by mob rioters. Do you agree? Do you think the president bears some responsibility? He bears some responsibility, yes. And in saying that, then why didn't you go ahead and vote for impeachment? Um, for two reasons. One is process. There was no evidentiary hearing. It was just thrown before us, the full um, House of Representatives, and expected to vote on it. There should We should have due process for anyone at this point yet. So it was certainly a process thing. And then secondly is... President Trump will no longer be president next week. Joe Biden will be the 46th president. And this was really pouring salt in the wounds, I thought, by Speaker Pelosi. Um, should have just let the process play out. Joe Biden will be the next president this coming week. And when you say, you know, you didn't have an evidentiary hearing, but don't you have all the witnesses right there in the House? I mean, you all, you all saw what happened. You know what happened. You were there, front row. Well, I think full information needs to come out. In fact, I hope there is a full investigation, and it should be a bipartisan investigation, of what happened on January 6th. For example, we just heard in the last uh, couple of days that a man from Utah, uh, I believe his name, name is Bennett, um, was involved with riots last summer. He was there egging people on. We really need to, need to need to know the full scope of what has happened, and we did not do that. It's time to turn the page and move on. Well, federal prosecutors are now saying that the rioters, they believe, had planned to capture and assassinate elected officials, which is terrifying news. We're also hearing reporting that maybe some members of Congress were afraid to vote to impeach the president. They were afraid that people would, the president's supporters, would come after them. Is that anything that crossed your mind? So think about it. I have uh, one of the strongest districts for the president in the state of Wisconsin. And my vote through this whole process, um, regardless of, cast, of which vote it was, I never feared the, Trump, uh, uh, the president's supporters. We have to go forward and do what we think is the right thing. And that's part of the reason why I um, uh, supported the objection to the electors. I wanted to get to the bottom of are we doing our election processes appropriately? Let's make sure we're only counting legal ballots. That's the reason why I supported doing some review of our elections from the very beginning after the November 3rd elections. But when it comes to objecting to the election, so last week on this show, Republican Congressman Mike Gallagher said it would be hard for him to support anyone who went through with objecting to the election results after people died at the Capitol. You're on that list of objectors. You've had time now to let it sink in, to think about it. Do you stand by objecting? You did so in two states and you said you would have done Wisconsin if you had the chance. Yeah, I stand by those objections because there are many irregularities and those have not gone by. Those, those have not been dealt with. Now, January 6th, the process is completed for who will be the next president. Joe Biden will be the next president. I accept that and we're going to move on. But the election irregularities, they continue. Remember in Wisconsin, we had people who were getting around the photo ID requirement by claiming to be indefinitely confined and they were not. We had a state senator who was clearly not indefinitely confined and she claimed that. We have people that were voting in the park, which was clearly against the law. These things need to be dealt with before the next election or we're gonna be in this same place place two years from now. I'm really hoping that Republicans and Democrats can come together in state legislatures and pass some elections refor election reforms that are sorely needed. But the Wisconsin Supreme Court, as well as courts across the country, went ahead and said, no, we, we should count these votes. We, we should let them go ahead. So you objecting then after everything happened at the Capitol, does that not look to the rioters that you're saying, hey, you were right. This, this election is fraudulent. This should be overturned. I mean, that's what the objection is. Yeah, that was not the case I made to people. And if people look at my words, I did not use the ter term fraudulent. I said irregularities. And that is what happened in our election. I mean, we had a county clerk in Dane County who said to people back in April, uh, just go ahead and claim indefinitely confined and then you don't have to show photo ID. That is clearly in contravention of the law. 
the Wisconsin State Supreme Court is turning these cases down on standing. They're not taking them up on the merits. And it is time for the Wisconsin State Supreme Court to do their job and take these cases up on their merits because the law is being broken yet. Now, that doesn't mean that Joe Biden didn't win the election. That's not what I'm saying. You just have to make sure that we're only counting the legal ballots. Well, and you said yourself that you wanted to turn down the temperature. Do you consider objecting to those votes turning down the temperature? I think one of the uh, main reasons or one of the main ways that a person turns down the temperature is January 6th, the electors um, were completed. As Ruth Bader Ginsburg said once, the election is complete as of January 6th. It is now complete. Joe Biden won the most electoral votes. He will be the next president of the United States. And I think that's the best way to turn down the temperature is to acknowledge that peaceful transition of power that's going to happen this coming week. A conviction in the Senate would take 17 Republicans. Do you think there's any chance of that happening? Well, I'm not in the Senate, so you'll have to ask those uh, senators. Right, but you're a Republican, so I figure you, you, know, you might speak with some of them or talk to them on this matter. Sure. Um, they're going to be voting their conscience. These, these votes that we've been taking over the last couple of weeks are fundamental constitutional issues. And everybody has a different approach that they take on these issues and sometimes different inter interpretations. I respect the senators that are there, that they're going to give this the serious thought that it should get. I mean, compared to this week when impeachment was just thrown on the floor of the House without committee hearings or anything like that, I hope the Senate at least takes its responsibilities seriously, not like the majority did in the House of Representatives. When it comes to the future of the party, I know you understand that a Senate conviction would mean President Trump could not run for future office. So I want to know if you still support the president going forward, having a future in politics in the Republican Party. Yeah, the reason I supported the president and the president has acknowledged this is this is about the millions of Americans who wanted to have peace in the Middle East, who wanted to have secure borders, who wanted to challenge China and not allow them to steal our intellectual property, have fair trade deals like USMCA that was just passed last year. That's what this movement is all about. And whether President Trump is there or not, it is not going away because the movement is about the people. It is about the rank and file. And that's going to continue whether President Trump has a role or not. Do you support the president, though, going forward? Would you like to see him continue in politics after everything that's happened? Well, I've, the reason that I've been supportive of the president is his policies. It is that he brought peace to the Middle East, unprecedented, first president since Eisenhower who did not create or start another war. That, that's, that's amazing. Rewrote our trade deals so they're fair to America, controlled our borders. I mean, think about, there were 10,000 people coming across the border illegally when President Trump came into office. That dropped down to 1,000 people a month um, in the last year, in 2020. So it's those policies that I support. And I would say that regardless, um, whether I was supporting Scott Walker or anyone else, it is not about the person. It is about the Constitution. It is about our founding ideals that we should have a free America where people can prosper. Congressman Tiffany joining us from Minocqua. Thank you for your time today. It's good to be here, Adrian.